but I don't have the projector on yet. I'm trying to recall if there are any announcements that need to be made. I guess the only one, and it's a pretty minor one. Uh, office hours tomorrow on Thursdays are usually 11.15 till 3.15. However, tomorrow we have a faculty meeting. Fortunately, it's on this campus right across the way here in Ethel Hall Auditorium at 2.30. So I'll have to leave the office about 2.25 to get there. So my office hours tomorrow are only 11.15 till about 2.15, 2.20, something like that, uh, because I'll have to go to the faculty meeting. Now, I'm leaving the faculty meeting early because we've got a class at 315. It's a mini term class, and they can't afford to miss. One, every day of class is like a week in a regular term, so that just isn't reasonable to, uh, to cancel the class because of the faculty meeting. It's just not that much going on. They just do it because they're required to have them, I think. Did I say that out loud? Well, never mind. Okay. Now. Uh, any questions on anything we've covered so far? All right. Uh, we are in Module 13, that's correct, rational expressions, uh, exponents, and radicals. The next slide here says Section 13.3. We're not there yet, okay? We're at the end of 13.2, uh, 13.3, okay. Let me go one more. Objective... Uh, 13.3b. We're not there yet. We are still in 13.3, but I'm going to use this white space because the rest of uh, this next couple of examples were not on the slide set. So I went on and put in this new section's slide set so I wouldn't have to stop in the middle. And I wasted all that time I saved talking about it. Okay, never mind. All right, no questions on what we've done so far? Well, if you got your text, e-text or whatever kind of text, on in goodness it's hot in here module 13 page 10 just about the middle of the page we had done the first two products of conjugates as a difference of two squares we had done the first two we hadn't done the second or the third one yet okay so that's where we're going to lead off today any questions before we get started here okay the third one of these is 3 plus the square root of y times 3 minus the square root of y. Okay? How do you do that? And there's a couple of ways, so you choose whichever way you see, understand, know the best. How would you proceed? Give me some help. What would you do? Say again? Okay, multiply everything inside. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, what do you mean by that? As in foiling it? The what? Pin ball. Pin okay. Okay. Uh, sort of a new one on me, but I like the concept. Let's do three by three. Right? That is 9. Then you can do 3 by minus square root of y. And what would that give you? Negative 3 square root of y. Okay? Then you could do 3 times square root of y, which is plus 3 square root of y. Okay, and then you do the last pinball in place is minus y, okay, because it's a plus times a minus is a minus. Square root of y times square root of y is y, okay. What happens to those middle terms? They disappear. They add to zero, and your answer is 9 minus y, okay. The purpose of doing these is to show that the sum times the difference of the same two entities, which we call the conjugates of one another. Those conjugates multiplied together always gives you the difference of their squares. The square of this is 9. The square of that is y, 9 minus y. Okay, that's the shortcut way to do it. The pinball works, okay, as long as you do every pair that's out there. Okay?
Does that make sense? Okay, good deal. All right, then the next focus they did not have in the uh, PowerPoint. So we'll do it here. All right, for me to erase this one. Okay. It says, fairly similar to what we've done before, multiply. The only minor little difference here is it's the square root of A minus the square root of B times the square root of A plus the square root of B. What do you suggest here? If you can go straight to the answer, that's fine. If you need a few steps, that's fine. If you need to walk a mile, that's fine. Okay? Or, it's all right for Sierra to come in. All right. A minus B. Went straight for the jugular there. Okay? A minus B. Why? It's the conjugates multiplied by each other. The sum times the difference of the same two entities is the difference of their squares. The square of square root of A is A. The square of square root of B is B. The difference of that is A minus B. That certainly will work. If you don't see that or don't understand why, go on and pinball it, foil it, however you call it, but, but do as many steps, as few steps as you can, to get the correct answer, okay? And it comes out A minus B, okay? There is a check your understanding right after that, number four. Unless someone would like to see that done now, I would suggest doing that as soon as you can after you get out of class, okay? And then whenever you can, also do the problems. Now, this has six, which is not a huge number, but it is a number. All of these uh, solutions are in the end of this uh, module, so please do every one of those, just so you can understand all the nuances, uh, different ways you can express it. So, any questions? Anyone need to see any more of them done? Okay? All right. So, as I said, we continue in module 13, Rational Exponents and Radicals. It, we're continuing section 13.3, multiplication and division of radical expressions. Now, what have we done so far in this module section? Multiplication. So guess what's coming next? Division, dividing ra radical expressions. Okay? And I think that some of you, many of you, most of you, will probably have a good idea how to go with this once I mark you here. Okay. Anyone else come in such a call roll? Okay, so now we're going to try to divide radical expressions. Okay, now, the square root of a quotient is equal to the quotient of the square roots. Just like the square root of a product is equal to the product of the square roots. Same deal holds for quotients. Remember, multiplication and division are really similar. Multiplication is multiplying two entities together. Division is multiplying one entity by the reciprocal of the other entity. One limit's here. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Now, that leads to this, the quotient property of square roots, which says the same thing as that first sentence did. If A and B are positive real numbers, that's the only thing you can take square roots off, then the square root of A divided by b is the same as the square root of a divided by the square root of b. The square root of a quotient is equal to the quotient of the square roots. Okay. It goes the other way too, so you can do that as well. Here are some examples. Okay, What would be the square root of a squared over b fourth b? a over a b what? b to the second? A over B squared. Perfect. Because it's the square root of the top, which is A, over the square root of the bottom, which is B squared. Okay, how about that? Square root of 4X squared over Z to the sixth. 2X over the second. A little louder. 2X over Z to the third. That's the sixth X. Okay? You see that? 
The square root of z to the sixth is z to the third. That's z times z times z times z times z times z. Every pair of that brings out a z. Does that make sense? The square root of a quotient is the quotient of the square root. Take as many steps as you need to convince yourself you're there. I mean, you can split this into square root of 4 times the square root of x squared. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of x squared is x. Okay? This is the square root of z cubed squared, if you want to put it that way. And that would be z cubed. Whatever it takes for you to see and understand what's going on, as long as your steps are right. Don't make up any new rules. It's my job. Okay? You just use the rules in place. Okay? Now, remember way back, okay, when we first started this stuff, we talked about a radical expression being in simplest form. Part of that simplest form is you have no hidden roots in the radical, right? Okay, like the square root of 4, that's 2, and the square root of x squared is x. That's simpler than this. This is simpler than that, but it's not completely simplified. Okay, here is another rule, I may give you two of them, about simplest thing. A radical expression is not in simplest form if a radical remains in the denominator. This is not the simplest form. That is simpler than that, but they just show it in for illustration. But that's not allowed, okay? Keep working on it until you get rid of the radical. Keep working on it until you get rid of the radical. What if you can't get rid of the radical? Then the procedure used to remove the radical from the denominator is called rationalizing the denominator. Okay? And that's what we're going to do next. That's what the conjugates are going to help us do in certain circumstances. Not in every one, but in certain ones. Now let me give you another rule. They say a radical expression is not in simplest form if a radical remains in the denominator. Neither is it in simplest form if a denominator is inside the radical. Like this, we went on and did that, then we got that rid of that. So I like to say it two ways. A uh, radical expression is not in simplest form if a radical is, remains in the denominator or if a denominator remains inside a radical. Keep moving until you get rid of both of those. You might ask yourself, why? Okay, let's see what kind of examples they give here. Okay, let's go on with this first, and then I'll talk about why. When the denominator contains a radical expression with two terms, okay, two terms, okay, simplify that radical expression by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by, guess what? Our good old friends, the conjugate of that binomial. That's what we do. Why? When you multiply that denominator by its conjugate, what do you get? Rational number. Not irrational anymore, rational. Okay? You get rid of the radical in the denominator. The following list summarizes our discussion, their discussion, about radical expressions in simplest form. Okay? And this, I think, yeah. This says what I did, but in different words. First, the radicand contains no factor greater than one that is a perfect square. Well, this is if we talk about the square root radical. If that was a cube root, then that would be a perfect cube. A six root, the perfect six power. Okay? So, but just right now, we're only dealing with perfect square roots. There's no fraction under the radical sign, and there's no radical in the denominator. So in other words, there's no fraction in the denom there's no denominator in the radical, and no radical in the denominator. To me, that's an easier way to remember because it's using the same terms. Okay? Now, we still haven't gotten to y. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, these are too tough. Uh, well, I mean, we're going to do them. They're, they're not bad. Here's y. Okay? They don't like radicals in denominators. This is one reason, anyway. You folks have grown up with calculators in your hands, right? And more recently, cell phones in your hand and in your brain. They are your brain. No, I don't know. That, you know you're just all over with those things. They're great, okay? 
They do a lot of things that before were very long-winded to do. For instance, this. Give me a number, any number. 68. 68? 68. Okay, 68. And I'm going to take the square root of it. Okay? Let's divide it by another number, maybe a little bit smaller. Anybody? A number. Anybody? 32? Is that what you said? Huh? 34. 34. Oh, she's making it easy, isn't she? Let's do something else rather than, how about 32 since I thought that's what you said? 32. Okay. If you were going to try to divide those two things, I can picture you now. Whip out your calculator, whip out your telephone, and just plug them in and do them. And it's really easy, right? But guess what? Before your time, they didn't have those really easy things. So what would they have done back then? Using one of those rules, the one we did before. You look for perfect squares inside that. Now what's, okay, one doesn't count. Okay, <laughs> the next one's 4. Will 4 go in the 68? Yes, it will. So that would be the square root of 4 times what? It's left. Huh? I'm not asleep. Okay. I believe it's 17, isn't it? Is that right? Okay. All right. And the denominator. Say again? Four again. We certainly can take out a four. What's left? Eight. Any perfect squares in eight? What? Another four. And you're left with a two. Right? All right. Now, what this will be is Square root of 4 is 2, root 17, okay? And this is 2 times 2, which would be 4 times root 2. And you can simplify that and make it 1 half, right? Okay. We still don't have an answer, though, do we? Okay? Well, if you, and this is sort of cheating, but just to save time, pull out your handy-dandy calculator or cell phone and tell me what the square root of 17 is. 4.0 something, 1 something, pretty small number. Anybody? 1, 6? 1, 2. Any more? Say again? 3, 1, 1. Any more? Is that it? Okay, we'll, we'll stop there. Down in the denominator is 2 times the square root of 2. Well, the square root of 2, I, well, I'm going to write it down. I know it starts off being 1.414. Give me a few more digits. Anybody? Square root of 2. Two nine? Two one. Two one. Okay. That's enough for now. So I'm going to multiply. So this is 4.12311 divided by 2.82842. Right? We've still got a division to do. Remember, except for getting these numbers, no calculators allowed. So what we do is 2.82842 divided into 4.12311. And in order to divide a fractional form, y'all probably have forgotten this because you never do it anymore. You move this decimal five places to the right because we don't divide by fractional numbers. Move this one five places to the right and then put in a bunch of zeros, probably at least six zeros so we can round back to five places. And then you start your division by hand, long division, and that's going to be a lot of fun, right? Not, okay? It's miserable, okay? Now, 
I want you to flash back in time a little ways. Does anyone know what the Manhattan Project was? Oh, boy. Wow. I kind of remember, but I'm so little, it's <laughs> okay. very vague. The Manhattan Project <laughs> was during World War II. We got word that the mighty Germans, with all their brain power, were working on developing a nuclear weapon. Because, you see, Einstein and Planck and all those great minds around right at the turn of the 1900s, early in the 1900s, had come up with quantum mechanics, E equal MC squared, you know, all this kind of stuff, and that somehow there could be a bomb built that used the <coughs> splitting of an atom. And the massive would be the destruction thereof. And that they were working on it. We already knew they were working on great rocketry. They were sending rockets across from Germany and just pummeling Britain, which is the only major European power that hadn't fallen to their you know, control. And they were just giving them fits, their air, but also the rockets. Boy, if they got a nuclear weapon, which no one really knew what that was, except it would be awfully bad, on a rocket, shoot, they could even send it to the U.S., maybe, huh? Well, we couldn't stand that, so we started trying to develop our own nuclear weapon. We were aided by the fact that people like Einstein, who was Jewish, had fled Nazi Germany because of what they were doing to the Jews, and several other great scientists had come over here, and uh, Werner, Werner von Braun, oh, no, that was after the war. But anyway, they got together this huge think tank of how, if it's possible, to develop an atomic weapon. That was the Manhattan Project. Okay? Now, can you even begin to guess what kind of calculations? be involved in that. No, I cannot either. Okay. And guess what? Zero calculators, zero computers, zero cell phones, you know, nothing but pencil and paper. And you know What's that? I don't think they had pencil and paper. They had chalkboards. No, no. In World War II, they had pencil and paper. <laughs> Goodness. They usually worked on chalkboards, though. Well, they did, but uh, what I, I'll, I'll <laughs> explain this in a second. The deal was, this was top, 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 top secret stuff. No one knew what the Manhattan Project was except those few people involved with it. But they needed the greatest brain power in the U.S., and anywhere else they could get it. So they recruited rooms full of the best mathematicians they could get to come and had them in rooms and would give them a problem. All of them the same problem. Very complicated problem. Very difficult problem and ask them to calculate and come up with the answer. And another room would be working on another one and another. No one knew what they were working on except they had to do these problems. Then they collected all those, and the answer that came up the most they hoped was the right answer because they had no other way to check it, you know. So that's what they did to develop their... And everybody had a little piece of it. No one knew, had the whole picture except the few on top that were putting all this together. And they were doing things like this. I mean, this is one of the simplest things they were doing. But they did not want to divide by errata, Right? miserable division, especially if you needed lots and lots of precision, which guess what? With atomic weapons, you want them to be pretty close to right, okay? You didn't want anything exploding uh, two or three seconds too soon or something like that. That would be awful. So here's what they did. Oh, and someone got a calculator. I'm cheating. Do 4.12311 divided by 2.828. <laughs> Four two, But don't give me the answer yet. Get it down. Here's what they did. Let's go back to where we left off. And that was the square root of 17 divided by 2 root 2. Okay. What we're going to do is rationalize that denominator. Make it a rational number, not an irrational number that has all these digits that never repeat themselves. So, what would we do to rationalize that denominator? Easiest thing to do. What? 
by what time? Well, okay, you don't need the conscience because this isn't by the This is just a simple little mono. So multiply. Numerator and denominator by square root of 2. Because what's square root of 2 times square root of 2? Okay, so we're going to multiply numerator and denominator by square root of 2. Okay, now, why can you do that? What's square root of 2 over square root of 2? 1, and when can you multiply by 1? Anytime you want to, it doesn't change the value. Okay, so what does that give us? The square root of 34 divided by... 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, now watch this thing. I'm going to do 4 into, someone do it on the calculator, I'm cheating, square root of 34. Please, someone just do that. Square root of 34. Speed it along a little bit. Square root of 34. One, okay. 5.8309. One, eight, nine, five. Okay. Now watch this team. Four will go into that one time. Four will go into 18 four times. Four will go into 23 five times. Four will go into 37 times. Uh, four will go into 29. Oh, no, I can't do that. Uh, four times. Goodness gracious. I hope I'm not getting... No, 29 seven times. I was right. Okay. I'm trying to go too fast. Okay. Another seven times, I believe. Uh, one, four go into 15 three times. Four go into 31 uh, seven times. Four go into 38 nine times. Four go into 29 seven times. And four go into... 15, 3, 7, 5. Okay. I may have made a mistake here. But someone tell me what you got when you did this division. 4.12311 divided by 2.82842. Someone do that? Please tell me yes. Wait, 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 wait. One point four five seven seven. You got the same answer. Okay, I probably messed up something. That's four two. Okay. So, but the deal is there. I got this answer almost in my head, whereas this one would have taken me many, 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 many minutes. Okay, to work that out with may, way more chances for me to make it a mathematical error than that. See, rationalizing the denominator makes division so much easier. And you folks say, so what? The calculator is easy. Of course it is. But, but, back then it was not. So that's the big, big deal on rationalizing denominators. Okay? Now, when you have variables in there, it gets even more important. So that's what we're going to be doing. <coughs> this is why they came up with the concept anyway. Because dividing by an irrational number is almost impossible. Dividing by a rational number, piece of cake compared to that, right? Okay. Enough history lesson, let's get back to math. Okay. Let me first, I know Saya came in. I just saw that. I know you're in here somewhere. There you are. And did anyone else come in while I was running my yell? Okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, Bree, right? Is that right? Okay. Anyone else come in while I was talking? Okay. Got it? Okay. Did anyone check out? Well, no, never mind. We won't go into that. Okay. So, we are going to rationalize denominators. And including those with variables, which even gets more, more important. Okay. And this is the rules we just did. So here is the focus. I have a feeling we may have an example first. So let's go back and do the example. Jayla? Jayla? Okay, got it. No, you're not. 
you're in here. There you are. All right. Anyone else come in since the called roll? All right. We'll use the same page here and do the ones that they have right under the quotient product of square roots. Okay. A couple of examples here. Here's the first one. The square root of 24 x cubed y seventh over 3 x seventh y squared. Okay. Now, as I've probably said many times before, and I'll probably say many times again, there's more than one way to approach a problem like this. And you need to determine what's best for you. In my mind, I would say simplify this thing first before you start trying to simplify the rest. Take care of things as they are. Is there anything you can simplify in that rational expression underneath the radical? So we're going to keep the radical. What do you see you can do? Okay, 3 will go into 24. How many times? 8 times. Okay. Now. So is that x to the 4th in the denominator? Yes. Yes, okay. And then? Y to the 5th in the numerator. Numerator, right. Okay, good deal. We just simplified it. Now, well, that is just simplifying the rational expression. Now let's get to the radical expression. What are the three rules for radicals that you don't want in a radical? We just had those on the screen. Does anyone remember what they were? Do not have radicals in the denominator, or sort of the twist on that, don't have the denominators in the radical. Okay? And then the other thing is, don't have any, we were doing way back, what under a square root? Perfect. Squares in their square root. So do you see any perfect squares hiding anywhere in there? The 8 contains what? The square root of 4? Wait, let's not do it that way. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to factor it first. Okay. All right. So let's do it. I'm trying to do it the way that will make it. Okay. 4 times 2. How about y fifth? You see any perfect squares hiding in there? y to the fourth, and what's left? y, why not? Okay, how about the denominator? x squared squared, right? That's what that is. Okay, well let's take out those perfect squares. Take them out, okay. Square root of four is two. Square root of y to the fourth is y squared. Square root of x to the fourth is x squared. Those are all outside the radical. And what do you have left? This went out, that went out, those went out, 2y. Guess what? You rationalize the denominator without ever having to rationalize the denominator just by factoring out the perfect squares. So this didn't require anything to deal with denominators. Either radicals and denominators, or denominators and radicals. You got them out to begin with. Okay. That gave you two y squared over x squared, and then the, or two y squared times. Okay. You can write this two different ways. Okay. Two y squared times the square root of two y, all over x squared, or the way I wrote it. Either way, here's the problem. If you'd have been doing it in web assign. If you put that answer down, they'd have said wrong answer. Not wrong answer, right answer, just in a different form if they wanted it that way. And who knows what way they want, okay? It's a guessing game. All right, now let's do the B part. The square root of 4, goodness gracious, 
I say 4 and write X. I, something's wrong with the old brain here, you know? Okay. The square root of 4 X squared Y over the square root of XY. Anything wrong with that picture? Anybody? What are our three rules we try to avoid? Say so again? There's a radical in the denominator. Yes, there, well, uh, yes, a radical in the denominator. That's one bad, bad boy, okay? The four and the x squared. Are both perfect so squares inside the radical. So let's deal with those first ones first. What would that be? 2x times the square root of y over the square root of x times the square root of y. Why did I write it like that? Because that way it makes it easier to see you can cancel out the y. Absolutely. It's perfectly legal. The, 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 the square root of a radical of a product is the product of the radicals. I use that thing. And then I saw you can get rid of that with sound effects even. Okay. Now, have we gotten rid of all of our problems? No, we still have a radical in the denominator. How do we get rid of that? Multiply by, what do you say? Square root of x. But if you do that denominator, guess what you got to do? Multiply by the numerator as well, because that's 1, and you can multiply 1 anytime you want to. So this then leads to 2x times the square root of x over over x, which now leads to ding ding, there's some more sound effects, 2 root x. Done. Okay. Wow. Really simplified down, didn't it? Okay. Let's make sure the book did the same way. Oh, look at that. They got 2 root x as well. Okay. Now, finally, I don't know why they didn't do this first. Here's another one at the bottom of the page, page 11 in module 13, that says 2 over the square root of 3. Now, if you're just trying to get an answer, any calculator in the world will do that. Well, not anyone. I've had some real cheap ones that didn't even do square roots. But even the cheap ones they give away nowadays will do a square root most of the time. But you can do that. But mathematically, how would we do that? Square root of 3 over the square root of 3 because that's 1. And what does that give you in the numerator? 2 root 3. You can't do much with that. We made that a little messier, but who cares? It's the denominator we're trying to clean up. And what's that? 3. Done, done, done. 2 root 3 over 3. Make sense? All right. All right. They have some verbiage there. I think we've already said all that. Um, but now we get hinting toward the next thing we're going to do. And in fact, we should have done all this before I gave you those three rules. Um, here's one more. Simplify the square root of 2y over the square root of y plus 3. Uh-oh, spaghettios. What are we going to do with that? Say again. Yes! Now we're going to have to multiply by the conjugate. We don't care about this being in the square root. That's fine. You know, we're all right with numerators. It's no radicals in your denominator, and that has one. But what makes it worse is this is a binomial number. But guess what? We can handle that. We just multiply by the conjugate. What is the conjugate of that one? The square root of y, what? Minus 3. Perfect. But if we do that, guess what? Have to do that in the numerator as well. Square root of y minus 3. 
So a little more work to do, and I did not leave enough room. So I'm going to erase the top. I don't need that anymore. Does anyone need it anymore? Okay. I heard no objection, so it's going. Going, gone. Or on the way. I know this must look strange at home when you see this little thing just disappearing. Maybe it even looks strange on the board. Okay. Who cares? Okay. So let's get that. So let's do the numerator first. What's the square root of 2? Well, we're going to distribute this inside. What does that give you? The square root of 2y times the square root of y. You want me to write it out that way? For, the square root of 2y squared. Perfect. Say again. Yep, minus 3 of 2y. Square root of 2y. Right. You do that one. Right. Okay, now let's do the denominator. Y minus 9. Okay, perfect. The difference of their squares. That's why we did the conjugates. Square of square root of Y is Y, and square root of 3 is 9. So it's Y minus 9. Okay. Okay, we fixed our denominator, but kind of messed up the numerator a little bit. So we just got to go back and fix that. What do you see we need to do there? What's that? Okay, yeah, we what comes out of that? The y square. And what's the square root of y square? Say again? No, the two doesn't come out. That's not a perfect square. It's y root two. You see? Only the y comes out because square root of y squared is y but you still got the square root of 2 in there. Now, the book may write the square root of 2 in front. I don't like to because then I sometimes confuse myself and think the y is under that radical. I like to write the y in front so you know it's not in the radical. But that's just the first term. The second term is nothing else you can do, 3 root 2y. Okay? And your denominator, y minus 9. Can't do anything else that I can see. Okay? Let's see how the book wrote their answer. They put the y root 2. Good for them. Minus 3 square root of 2y over y minus 9. They got it right this time. Okay. Yes? All right. Interesting question here. Where? Over here or over here? This one? Okay. Cancel out the 2y. That 2y right there? Right. The y in the denominator. Y in the denominator. And this y up here. No, uh, we're not multiplying. Huh? We're not yes. Multiplied. Okay. You see, this is a subtraction sign. You can only divide out things that are multiplied, not subtracted. Okay. So, no, you can't separate that. If there was a y over here, too, yeah, you could factor it out. And if this wasn't in the radical, then you could factor it out. And then you can do it. But you have to have it multiplied in order to divide. Because you're not canceling. You're dividing. Okay. That's why I, I remember when I was in school, cancel seemed like a perfectly good word to me. And I remember the math teacher saying, hey, now cancel, we divide. You know, I thought, well, you're just being picky, you know. Now I see why. Okay. Okay. As I think it was maybe Mark Twain said, he said, when I was 16, I could not believe how stupid my father was. And when I got 26, I could not believe how much smarter he had gotten in just 10 years. So, never mind. It's a different issue. Okay. I thought the math teacher was a little picky back then, but now I see. Okay. All right, so that gets us down to, now we should be saying this, so we've said it, okay? In fact, this top paragraph here was above that. It's really messed up here. Now we're ready for the focus, and here we have it. So how would you simplify the A part here? Any ideas? 
A little louder? <coughs> okay, and what do you see as a perfect square there? It's four, three, three, three. Okay, okay. So you're going to pull out the four, x squared, y to the fourth, and leave a square root of y. Is that what you said? I thought so, okay. That's in the numerator. How about the denominator? The square root of x to the fourth and leaving the square root of 3y. Okay, in that first one you pulled out, what does that become? Anybody? Square root of 4. 2. Were you going to say something else? X. Y squared on to the square root of y. Can't do anything with that. How about square root of x fourth? x squared times the square root of 3y. Can't do anything with that, can we? Oh, I am going to do something. Ooh, why didn't I think of this before I wrote it? Okay. I'm going to cheat like crazy. Okay. Because I know what they want me to do. I'm going to write that as the square root of 3 times the square root of y, and why would I do that? Cancel. Now you can, yeah, that's all right to say cancel. Maybe you divide it out, okay? All right, what else? Anything? Get rid of an X. Yeah, get rid of an x. Who wants two x's in there, okay? All right, all right. So what we're left with is 2y squared over x root 3. Mm. Yeah, huh? No, we can't. We shouldn't. Why not? We have a radical in the denominator, and how do we get rid of it? Oh, yeah, square root of 3. Yeah. No, I couldn't hear. My hearing's not good, and I realized what you were saying. Okay, now, that, the way I would write it, is 2y squared root 3 over 3x. Once you get rid of that radical, then you can put it in front of the variable. Okay? Now, that's a perfectly good way to write it. I'll give you another way that's no better. I don't even know why I'm going to say it. You could say that's 2 thirds. Pull out the numerical part times y squared root 3 over, over x. Okay? You could do that if you wanted to, or if you want to pull all the number part out, it's 2 root 3 over 3 times y squared over x. There's no advantage to doing those last two steps. I think that answer right there is probably what they have. Let's see if I can find what they have. 2y squared root 3 over 3x. Yes, they left it just like that. I just did the others just to show there's different ways to express the same answer. Not in WebAssign, but in real life there are. Okay. So there, oh, did I say that again? Okay. All right. Everybody got it? Can I erase it? Okay. Let's do the B part. What in the world would you do with that? Perfect. Okay, and what is the conjugate? Root 2 plus root, root, two plus root x. Okay, but if you do that, you have to multiply the numerator by root 2 plus root x. My writing really stinks, doesn't it? Don't answer that question. Okay, what does the numerator become? <laughs> Anybody? What does it say again? The roots go away, so you're just left with a 2, and then you have a plus, and you can put those on the same radical if you want to, square root of 2x. You don't have to, but you can. Okay? All right. And the denominator becomes... 
2 minus x. Wow. Okay. And what I don't want is... We're not even going to fake that, are we? Okay. Yeah. All right, good deal. That should be your answer. Let's see what they got in the book. Whoa! Oh, okay, I looked at the wrong answer. Okay, 2 plus root 2x divided by 2 minus x. Good for them. Does everybody see that? Understand every step we took? I got to bring my clock up again today. No, no, I didn't. All right, can we move on to the third one? Anyone have any questions on that? Why, how we did that? Okay. So I'm going to erase all that ink. And ooh, ooh, what do we do with C? Okay. Where? Where? Which conjugate? The denominator, of course. And what is that conjugate? 2 minus 3 root 5. And if we do that, though, we have to multiply the numerator by 2 minus 3 root 5. Okay, we got some work on our hands here. We got two falling situations, don't we? So what's the first term of the numerator? 6. The If I do it underneath, it's going to get really messy, so I'm going to do it above. The second term in the numerator would be negative 9 root 5. The next term in the numerator, negative 2 root 5. And the last term in the numerator would be ah, plus, second, 3 times 5, which is 15. Does everybody see that? Okay. It's a bit messy, but hopefully sealed. Okay, we'll come back in a minute and combine like terms. Let's go on and do our, numer our denominator next. Believe it or not, it's easier. What will it be? 4 minus, say again? I can't hear. Oh, no. Okay, 3, yeah, you got it right. No, 3 times 3 is 9 times 5 is what? 45. Does everybody see that one? Okay. Remember when you multiply the conjugates together, it's the difference of their squares. The square of the first one is 4. The square of the next one is 3 times 3 is 9. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. 9 times 5 is 45. But it's minus that. Everybody see that? Okay. Now, let's clean up the numerator a little bit. First, you got like terms, don't we? First two like terms are 21. Next two like terms are minus 11 root 5. And in the denominator we have a negative 41, right? Now, that's a perfectly correct answer. Perfectly fine. I just don't like all those minus signs in there, so what I'm going to do is do the negative of the numerator, which is going to flip that to be 11 root 5 minus 21 over the negative of the denominator, 41. I just like the way it looks better, because it doesn't have as many negatives in it. And I'm not that negative of a person until I'm grading papers. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Okay. But that's, both of those are perfectly correct answers. Huh? Okay, you could have pulled out a minus sign here and left it just like that. You're absolutely right. That's another way to do it. Minus, no, you, then it would have been a minus 21 plus 11 root 5 over, no, if you pull out, no, no, no. Wrote it, yeah. Why did you make the 41 on the denominator? There's no negative sign now. Okay. It's no longer negative 41. Okay. What I did, I did the negative of the numerator 
and the negative denominator, the negative over the negative is positive. So that was one again, plus one. So, but when I flipped these, that was the negative of this. Flipping that made it negative of that. Negative plus negative is positive. So, yeah. Okay? Okay, I imagine they left it like that in the book, let's see. Oh, no, they didn't. Here, they did what I think you were suggesting. Let's pull out the minus from the denominator only and leave it 21 minus 11 root 5 over 41. That's what they did in the book. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, only pull out one of them out front. Now, again, that's a little more negative than that, so I like this one probably, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. But all three of those are correct answers. WebAssign probably would only recognize one of them, okay? That's why I don't use WebAssign. Okay, now, we did the calculations there. Let's just see, can I erase this or anyone need it a little bit longer? Okay. Oh my, up from the dead he arose. Never mind, I didn't say that. Okay, uh, let's see how they did the first one. Okay. Strange, I never would have put it back under a radical. But because they didn't like radicals in the denominator, they moved everything under the radical, and now they have denominators in the radical. It's fine. It's perfectly okay to do it that way. Uh, but, like I said, there's many ways to approach these problems. They approach the, they use the quotient property to get it under one radical, which is fine. Nothing great there. Uh been so long, I don't even remember doing this. It just looks so different. Okay? The next thing they're going to do, I hope, is pull out perfect squares. No, they're going to divide next. That's fine, too. 4 over 3, those stay the same. The x squared divided into x fourth in the denominator, making x squared in the denominator, and then a y fourth in the numerator, which is fine. And then... <laughs> <laughs> then they go back out. I don't know why. They put it in the radical, now they take it out of the radical. It's fine, it's perfectly correct. And now they, I think they're going to pull out uh, perfect squares, hopefully by now. Yes, 2y over x root 3. They still got a radical in the denominator, so they're going to multiply by root 3 over root 3, and that produces 2y squared root 3 over 3x which is the same thing we got. I'm not sure their way was any clearer. I tend to think it was a little murkier. But every step they did was right. As long as you do every step correctly and keep going as long as you got steps, then you should come up with the right answer. Okay? Any question on how they got theirs? It is stranger, I think, than what we did, but it's up to you. Okay? That was the A part. B part was this one. And pretty obvious what you have to do here. Multiply by the conjugate of the denominator over the, and multiply the conjugate of the denominator by both the numerator and the denominator because you have to be like, fair and democratic about it. Okay? Then you distribute, and they don't show you how, but you distribute the root 2 here. That becomes 2. The root 2 there is first 2x. The denominator becomes two minus x. That was really straightforward, pretty easy to do, right? No argument, okay. Then let's do C part. Why would they write it on the bottom of the page? They've got to go to the new page. And again, they multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, both the numerator and the denominator by that. And I sure would prefer if they put in parentheses there so you could see you've got a foil or whatever you want to call that. Okay, they just show that you did it, okay? The first terms are 6, the next term is minus 9 root 5, minus 2 root 5, plus 3 times 5 is 15. Now they just do 3 times 5. And the denominator is 4 minus 9 times 5. Yeah, that's what they do, okay? which would be 21 when you combine the, the rational, num rational numbers, 
uh, 6 plus 15 is 21, and then you have like irrational numbers, minus 11 root 5 over negative 41. And then they just chose to pull out the minus sign in front of the whole fraction, okay? The one that was in the denominator, pull it up there. So 21 minus, negative 21 minus 11 root 5 over 41. Good deal. Okay. Now, there's a check your understanding five. Does anyone feel like we need to do one of those in class? Are y'all okay with it? Okay. Then do those as soon as you can after class, just to refresh, rejuvenate your memory. Okay. And then after that, do as many of the do the practice problems. I only have six of them. Try to do all six of those. Any questions on 13.4, 13.3b? Okay. If not, we'll move on to 13. Point four A. Now, at this point, though, in order not to lose anybody or any, forget to do it, let me go on and give you the quiz. The quiz covers through 13 A and B. Okay? Uh, all right. And for some reason, the copy came out a little blotchy on the left. I think I know why. But I didn't want you to leave here with nothing to do this weekend and be really angry at me all weekend for not giving you something to work on. Okay. I've assuaged my guilt now. Okay. So let's move on to 13. Okay. Are we... Okay, we've still got a few minutes, folks. Okay. <clears throat> Move on to 13. We're still in module 13, rational exponents and radicals. Now we're moving to 13.4. Ah, our favorite. What? All this other has been putting tools in our tool belt. Now we're going to put those tools to work. We're going to solve equations that contain radical expressions. Okay? And our objective 13.4a is solve equations containing one or more radical expressions. Solving equations. Okay. Now, an equation that contains a variable expression in a radicand is called a radical ex equation. Square root of x equals 4, that's a radical equation. If that had been x equals square root of 4, no, you just take the square root of 4 and you're done. Okay? It has to be the variable inside the radical. This is also one. The square root of x plus 2 is equal to the square root of x minus 7. Both variables are inside radicals. Those are what we call radical equations. See? When the variable shows up inside a radical on either side, or both sides. The following property of equality states that if two numbers are equal, then the squares of those numbers are also equal. And that property is used to solve radical equations. With a warning, anytime you square both sides of an equation, at the end of the problem, remember I always like to go back and check and make sure my answer works. When you square both sides of an equation, you've got to go back and make sure your answers work because you may have introduced what they call a uh, 
goodness gracious, what's the word for it? Uh, extraneous solution. So they haven't gotten there yet. I think they'll get there in a little bit. So if A and B are both real numbers and A is equal to B, it's guaranteed that A squared is equal to B squared. Okay. However, if A squared is equal to B squared, it's not guaranteed that A is equal to B. Because what if A were, give me a number, any number. Two. So 2 squared is 4. What's minus 2 squared? Minus 2 squared is 4. So therefore, 4 is equal to 4, but 2 isn't equal to minus 2. So you can't go the other way. You can go this way, but you can't go the other way. Always. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. If they're variables, you never know. Okay. So the next example, let's see. They sometimes throw in a yes. Let's see. Have to see what the next example is. Does anyone see this anywhere in the text? I don't. Uh, <laughs> so we'll. No, that's a focus. It should be here in the book. I don't see it in the book. So let me see what the next one is. They're just all over the place here, aren't they? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't go far enough, did I? Yes. They, they, they just cut out two pages all together. So forget that. Okay. Before we get there, let's do these samples they have here okay whoa okay all right let's first do this one solve this the square root of x minus 2 minus 7 is equal to 0 now the rule we just had said, if this is true, squaring both sides will be true too, right? Okay. That doesn't get us anywhere. Because if we square this, square this, you'll get rid of this one on the first. <coughs> then you have twice the product of these two, you still got the radical in there. So don't do that. Here's the deal. Remember when we were solving a linear equation, you isolate the variable. When you're solving a radical expression, isolate the radical first, then we'll isolate the variable. So isolate this, in other words, get this by itself. So how do we do that? Adding 7 to both sides. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. So that gives us the square root of x minus 2 is equal to 7. Now what do we do? Square both sides. And what's the square of x minus square root of x minus two? X minus two. And what's the square square of seven? Square of seven? Forty nine. Excellent. And then what do we do to solve for x? Add two to both sides. And that gives us x equal fifty one. Okay? Here, folks, is where I go back and check my answer. Put an x in here. What's 51 minus 2? 49. Square root of 49 is 7 minus 7 is 0. Yes, that works. Okay? This one's pretty obvious, so don't worry. Always check them. If you've done this step of squaring both sides, always check your answer. Always. Because otherwise, you might wind up with what they call an extraneous solution. Okay. Okay, they write that in the book, but they don't have it in the slide set yet. They may later. Okay, the first focus they do not have on the slide set, so let's do that. This, how are we doing on time? Huh? No more time left? We got two minutes. Huh? Two minutes? No wonder y'all look so sad. Okay. All right, get over it.
All right, we'll pick up next time on that first focus, which, remind me, will not be on the slide set, and so we'll pick up and go from there. Good deal, folks. Have a good weekend. It seems weird to say that on a Wednesday, but I won't see you again till Monday. And that means, of course, working on Huh? Oh, how sad. That's, oh, no wonder y'all are depressed. Okay, Monday is a state holiday, so we do not have class. Sorry about that. Not a test. Okay. No. Yeah. When do we have the test? After we finish the module. And we're only on 14, uh, 13, 4, B, uh, A right now, I think. So we've still got 13, 5, A and B. You have a quiz. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a second quiz to come up? No, no. They're just, when we finish the module, we'll have a test on the whole module. Actually, the test will be for a week from Monday. Probably about a week, yeah. Yes, sir. I was in here Monday. I can't get that quiz. Which quiz? The one we had the week before. Oh, you didn't get that one? Okay, so that means you haven't taken the test either. Is that right? You took the test. Okay. Uh, I think that may be what you're thinking of. Oh, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay, remind me of your last name. Horton. Huh? Horton. Horton. H-O-R-T-O-R. Oh, Horton, Horton. Okay, I can't hear. This should be an easy one to remember. Yeah, I've got your quiz three. I think it's that you haven't taken test three. Yeah, I have oh, That's not a take home. That's a, uh, you sit down and take it. Do you have time to do that now or when will you? I have class. Okay. When will you have some free time? I'm free today from a little bit of time from 12.15, no, 11.45 till 12.15. So you could start working on it then, but I have a class starting at 12.15. Or I'm back in the office between 2 and 4. So yeah, I got classes all day. All day? Okay. How about uh, Tuesday? Yes, I mean Thursday, tomorrow. Yes. I'm free from 11.15 until usually 3.15, but I have a faculty meeting at 2.30. So 11.15 to 2.30. Working in. Working then. Uh, How about Friday? Friday. I don't have school Friday. Okay, well, I'll no be way. on the Birmingham campus. Are you? Can you get there? Uh, you can't. So is there a way I can take it next week? Okay, yeah, but... Okay, next week, the bigger chunk of time I have is Monday from 2 to 6. Oh, I won't come to school on Monday, do you? Oh, that, that's right, we don't. Okay. Tuesday is just like Thursday of this week, 11.15 to 3.15, but you're either in class or working. Is that right? Wednesday. Wednesday is just like Wednesday of this week uh, from 11.45 until 12.15 or from 2 to 4. I could take the in class. You really, you'll be missing class, but you want to try that? Let's see. Okay. You want to do it in class or in another room? Oh, in class. Okay. All right. So, uh, so if you want to do that, Wednesday. Let's see. Okay. All right. Thank you. All righty. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Uh, pretty good. It was a long day yesterday. Why is this so confused? Oh, man. I forgot to end my...